Hi, I'm John Fowler, Executive Vice President of the Systems Group at Sun Microsystems. I'm joined here today by Andy Bechtelsheim, Chief Systems Architect for Systems at Sun. We're here today to talk about the Sunblade 6000, the world's first open blade platform that incorporates Spark, AMD, and Intel processors. So Andy, I'm really glad you could join us and give us a little insight on what, what you're trying to do here in this design. Well, our main objective was to create a blade server that does not create a negative disadvantage compared to rack servers. So these blades here are as good, if not better, than any conventional 1U rack server. So conventional blade servers today have had some, some disadvantages in, in well, performance or technology. Uh, give me some, some examples. Well, first of all, we have um, front accessible, hot swappable disk drives. We have RAID 5 controllers, RAID 5 and 6 controllers on the blade. This is this card right here. Okay. We have up to 16 DIMMs per uh, two socket system. This is twice as many DIMMs than the competition. Uh, this particular blade is, by the way, an Intel um, Cloverton, which is a, a dual quad core uh, blade. Uh, we have an AMD blade that looks very similar, except it's the AMD quad core. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, a Spark blade as so well. So commonly, if you're picking rack servers, you're looking for performance, you're looking for features. Looks like you've managed to engineer a lot into a very small space here. Do I have um, any issues with picking this over a rack server and some advantages as well? What are some of the advantages? As we go into the quad core CPUs, you really want lots of memory. Mm -hmm. So this product actually has more memory than our existing rack servers, although future rack servers will you know, also follow that. But again, we'll have the same amount of memory in the blade as well as in the rack server. We have RAID 5 here that we'll also gonna have in the rack servers um, soon. And uh, it has the same performance, same CPU performance as a rack server. In fact, it runs the same BIOS, it runs the same service processor. It's just like a rack server, except it's a blade. I see. So a lot of memory, a lot of I.O., this would be good. Virtualization is really common today. And yes. how does this play into a modern virtualized environment? Well, the biggest limit on virtualization is main memory footprint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, customers are telling us that they loaded the machine up with all the memory and the CPU is only 20% busy because they just don't have enough memory. This gets you more memory than any other blade server on the market today. I know one of the things you've worked a lot on is the I.O. architecture, and blade servers on the market today often have integrated complex switching, and you just took a different approach here. Give yes. us a feel for what you did. Well, we didn't think that was a good idea, so our back plan is actually PCI Express. So if we spin this around, what we have is we have two PCI Express modules per blade, a total of 20 modules per chassis. And in addition, we have what we call the Network Express modules, which bring out the uh, Gigabit Ethernet today and 10 Gigabit Ethernet in the future. I see. So what we're doing here is talking directly from I.O. through PCI Express, the backplane, to the blades. And that's compared to a proprietary interface that other folks may have. Yeah, why, why does that make a difference? Well, there's no switching. So we have conventional uh, PCI Express uh, fiber channel adapters, infinity band adapters, we can support exactly the same I.O. devices as we can support today on rack servers on this machine here. In fact, this is the only blade server that has conventional I.O. expansion. On other blade servers, you cannot even plug in any more I.O. because it only goes to the internal switching fabrics. I see. That sounds like proprietary to me. So you're saying that, that, that the I.O. here is probably going to be less expensive and I'm not going to be locked in. Is that correct? Correct. This is just industry standard PCI Express I.O. Right. So what about bandwidth? These are really powerful CPUs, uh, big memory systems. Did you design this to handle workloads of tomorrow and right so we we actually have more real bandwidth than mm -hmm. some of the I mean everybody claims big numbers here quite frankly but uh, we can actually support four 10 gigabit ports right now whereas other blade servers really only support gigabit per blade right now so there's a difference there four tens per blade, per blade. Did you say? we have we have a total of 32 piece express lanes to data gen 1 and when the gen 2 chipsets become available we can upgrade those to gen 2 so each Gen 1, uh, each 8-bit uh, Gen 1 port can support one 10 gig ports. Gig, 10 gig, infinite, infinite band, band, fiber channel, all, all at once. Like. That'd be great. Yes. So I notice there's a lot of stuff uh, actually here. I see little green handles and, and connectors here. And if I understand this right, it looks like this is all simple to service, easy external access. What, what, what's, what's the idea here behind all these external components? Well, everything that's green is uh, user, end user hot swappable. So this the six fan modules. These are very power efficient fans. 
uh, we have two network modules uh, which are hot swappable and uh, 20 PCI Express modules that are all hot swappable. And so hot swappable means you can swap them with the power on, the system's running, right? Correct. And how about in the front? We have power supplies and blades. Yeah, so there's two power supplies for the system and there's 10 blades. Everything and these are all swappable, swappable as well? Of course. And so this looks like something pretty much anyone can service. Is that, that the case? Well, the one chief advantage of blade service over rack service is that both the installation as well as the servicing is much, much simplified. Mm -hmm. So um, from, you know, between a, a blade server and a rack server, you would actually normally purchase a blade server unless you don't need, you know, unless you just need like one or two servers. I see. So in this, we're doing Intel, AMD, as well as, as Spark, and, and we can manage them all the same, and you can mix them in a, in a chassis and use them. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. And so um, in terms of mixing and matching between this and our rack servers, we also made some other decisions about management that allows yes. us to... To do yeah, things differently. The, the management process or the management system on the blades is exactly the same as a rack server. So you can actually manage a collection of blades and racks just as if it was one. So if I want to buy some sun blades, I want to buy some sun rack servers, I want to upgrade them later. I can manage them all through one console, exactly. one set of tools. So that's it's a very, all the same service yeah. processor. So, so looking forward, I, I know that you've designed these for a lot of power and airflow and, as well as efficiency. And so you think next generation processors and other technologies you can take here? Yeah, so um, we, when we started this, we actually took a five-year you know, roadmap uh, outlook on the future. And uh, it is true that future CPUs will improve power efficiency, which means they compute more for the power. Mm -hmm. But the power consumption, unfortunately, will also go up mm -hmm. a little bit. So this system is actually designed for all the next generation CPUs beyond the ones we're launching today. Okay, and so people can install this and then bring in new blades later with new processors without having to change, you know, the physical infrastructure at Correct. all. We, yeah, we don't need to do the blade center two here. This is designed to last for a long time. <laughs> Okay. There's a lot of confusion about power efficiency versus power consumption and power density. Could you just explain those three terms very clearly for well, people? Well, one confusion in the market is just that basically all vendors are using the same components. So the component power consumption, if you will, is actually the same you know, okay. whoever makes the system. What we focused on here was the efficiency of power delivery. So these power supplies are 90% efficient and the efficiency of cooling. So we take less power for the I fans see. than some other people do. Uh, and that combined will lead to slightly lower power consumption than a comparable, you know, other systems. Mm -hmm. And so efficiency is work done per watt, which is kind of, uh, is, is what you're after here. Correct. Is that and correct? Yeah, there are other trade-offs, which is, you know, there are certain CPUs that are lower power, but they're also slower, but they cost as much as the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, more powering you use. So, so there are some detailed trade-offs customers can, can make. But overall, you know, the, again, the component power consumption for every vendor is identical. We focused on the system level, chassis, power supply, cooling efficiency mm -hmm. to reduce overall power consumption. I see. So for a given aggregation of, of 10 servers and the amount of work we can do, which is efficiency, we have an outstanding solution here. Correct. And then in some cases, you know, Spark will be the most power efficient. In other cases, Intel, in some other cases, AMD. Mm -hmm. So you, you almost have to benchmark the, the workload to determine what the actual best power consumption is. One of the things I, I noticed about the I.O. here, which we, we didn't talk about, is it looks like it's all externally serviceable. Um, that means there isn't I.O. on the blades themselves. Is that correct? Correct. You don't actually have to configure these blades. These mm -hmm. blades come, you know, standard, and all the I.O. options plug in the rear. Okay, so let's say I could have some amount of blades, and then if I needed to upgrade the I.O., I would just come to the back here, and, and I'd pop out an I.O. module and replace it, and I don't actually have to touch the computer. Correct. And one of the limitations on other blades is that they put the I.O. options right on the blade, which means you actually have to remove the blade to change anything. I see. Actually, there's interesting the other way around is... Let's Let's say I connect up all my I.O. and then I upgrade my CPUs. I also don't have to touch this side, Correct. do I? Yeah, yeah it's a very, works, works in both ways. very, very big difference. Great, Andy. So is there any other things you'd like to, to point out about the design here? We've talked about power efficiency, the serviceability, the design yeah, for the so future. It's, it's, it's a 10-year box. Mm -hmm. You can put four of these in the rack, mm -hmm. um, and you get you know 10 blades per chassis, 40 mm -hmm. blades per Correct. So it's it's similar to the density that you get with a one-use server, but the power efficiency of the system is better than one-use servers. I see. So the power consumption actually goes down. Power consumption goes it's down. It's much, much easier to install, much easier to service. Uh, it's just a no-hassle solution. Right, and, and much more upgradable. Well, great. Thanks, Andy, for, for stopping by. And I really am looking forward to uh, launching this system, and I'm sure customers are going to be excited also. I'm sure they will. Thanks. Nice.